Let's take a look on how we can integrate dx over a minus x times b minus x, where a is not equal to b. As we can see, we have two linear factors on the denominators, so we have to uh, use partial fraction. So I will write this as integrating something over a minus x plus something over the second factor b minus x, and let me put the dx on the side. And to figure out these numbers, we can use cover up because they are just linear factors. So I need both ends. To figure out the number on top of the factor a minus x, I have to go back to the original and I will cover this up. So I just have 1 over b minus x left. But then I'm going to choose x being equal to a. Why a? Because if x is equal to a, I could have made this equal to 0. That's like the small number that we can use. So I cover this up, I plug in x is equal to a, so we have 1 over b minus a, that will be the number right here, 1 over b minus a. Similarly, to figure out the number above the b minus x factor, I go back to the original, I cover this up, and then I will choose x is equal to b. So we will have 1 over a minus b, 1 over a minus b. That's how we can do partial fractions with the cover up method even though we don't have actual numbers. All right, technically, this two, I can factor something out. But then to do that, notice that here we have b minus a, but here we have a minus b, they are almost the same. However, if you look at this number right here, let's look at one over b minus a. Let me just change the order of subtraction, which we can do that. I can write this as one over a minus b, as long as I put a parenthesis and the negative right here. So they will be exactly the same. And I can look at this as, I can bring the negative on the top, negative one over a minus b. I'm going to make that change. I'm going to look at this as negative one over a minus b. And this way we can factor something out. This is going to be negative one over a minus b over a minus x plus, this is one over a minus b, over b minus x, dx. And I get to factor out a factor 1 over a minus b, right? Because they both have that. So I can pull that, pull that uh, to the front of the integration sign, 1 over a minus b. And then we can integrate. The first part is going to be negative 1 over a minus x. The second one is plus positive 1 over b minus x, dx and I can finally integrate. So this will be 1 over a minus b all the way in the front. And now let's see what we have. Well, let's look at this part right here. 1 over a minus x. Integrate that, we get ln absolute value a minus x. But then, because the derivative on the bottom, the derivative of a minus x is the negative one. So technically, I will have to divide it by negative one. I need a negative right here. However, we still have this negative. So technically, I have a negative times negative like that. Okay, so it looks slightly strange. Let me just put parentheses like this. Right, and for the second part, very similar. Um, we're going to have, let's put on the addition sign right here, but then the integral one over b minus x is going to be ln absolute value b minus x, but then the derivative of the bottom is negative 1. So therefore, I need a negative right here. And I'll just put a, a little parenthesis like that. All right. And let me just put things together in a nice way. First of all, we still have that all the way in the front, 1 over a minus b. And then Inside here, notice that we have negative times negative, which is become positive. And then this is just negative, right? Plus the negative is just negative. And we have two LNs. I can just write it as one LN, but with a bigger size absolute value. And I can put this on the top, A minus X, and then over that on the bottom, B minus X. And this is it. This will be the integral of that. So we can just write down plus C for that. This is the answer.